and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and this is in this for the series of videos for the chapter 2 problems group B that were assigned and in the last video we uh, were working on uh, problem 39 so I'm just gonna pick up right where I left off so watch that video first um, so we had uh, opened up our account our ledger accounts our T accounts um, we had created journal transactions. Now it says post the transactions to the T accounts that have been set up. Um, use the transaction dates as posting references. And I mentioned that in the previous video in that I am not going to be putting the dates in simply because of uh, space requirements. So um, when we go to post, remember, uh, let me do a little bit something here. Okay, so this is a journal entry. You know, this is a journal entry. This is the journal entry. Um, these are from the uh, squeeze in there and I had to skip down here um, all I'm doing is just separating the entries here okay and depending upon the paper that you you're using you know uh, the lines on the paper everything will look somewhat different um, as long as you definitely have the date you know uh, the accounts a debit column and a credit column um, that's the important information. Oh, and, and, and that's the uh, barest minimum information for journal entry. Um, you could put account descriptions, but when you're talking about repetitive account, uh, repetitive uh, transactions like paying rent and su buying supplies and this and that, you don't really need a, uh, a description. But if you, um, uh, on a normal set of books, like whenever someone purchases common stock and especially if it's a small business and that transaction doesn't occur that often yeah you would make that as a journal entry now if you're a huge business like microsoft or google or facebook um, or apple or whatever um, you're obviously you're not going to make a description for every person that uh, buys you know 100 shares of stock so um, but anyway so we're going to now take the transactions and we're going to post them into our ledger accounts which we set up as t accounts and remember i'm not going to put in the date here because there's not that many transactions and um uh, it's uh, i can easily look and and look at the t accounts to see which transactions match up match up with which but if we had you know hundreds of transactions then the date becomes important because it helps us do the research and finding the information a lot quicker so um, I'm going to have a debit to cash for a hundred thousand so I come down to my cash account and I put the hundred thousand on the debit side uh, then I have a credit to the common stock account so common stock credit for a hundred thousand Okay, so now if you look at your books, if you post that one entry, see that my debits equal my credits. Notice that all I'm doing is just transferring information. I'm just rearranging information when I post so everything is in a like account. So I hear students say, oh, my debits don't equal my credits and when I create a trial balance. Well, you have to make decisions to make your journal entries, okay? Um, but once you've made the journal entry and you can see that the debits equal the credits, okay, and as long as all the, the journal entries, the debits equal credits, then it's simply mechanics, it's just paying attention to what you're doing um, and trying and, you know, focusing enough so that you're not making mistakes. Uh, really, there should be no reason why your debits don't equal your credits. Now, everybody makes mistakes, okay, um, doesn't matter if you've been in an account for 30 years, but... You, you know, after 30 years, you make very few mistakes the, during the course of the year, okay? Um, but if your debits don't equal your credits, you know, you have to find that mistake because there's no, you know, that's a, a basic foundation of double entry bookkeeping. All right, next entry is a debit to supplies for 575 and a debit to furniture. All right, so supplies, whoops, is 575 and 2300 to furniture and a credit to accounts payable for 2875 accounts payable 2875 so that's that entry 
a debit to cash for 1600 and a credit to service revenue. So I have a debit to cash for 1600 and a credit to service revenue for 1600. I have a debit to land for 28,000 and a credit to cash for 28,000. So a, a debit to land for 28,000 and a credit to cash for 28,000. I have a debit to accounts receivable for 1850 and a credit to service revenue for 1850. So a debit to accounts receivable for 1850 and a credit to service revenue for 1850. I have a debit to salary expense for 575 and a credit to cash for 575. So a debit to salary expense for 575 and a credit to cash for 575. I have a debit to accounts payable for 2300, credit to cash for 2300. Debit to accounts payable for 2300. That's not yep. And a credit to cash for 2300. See, all I'm doing is just rearranging the information, right? And as long as I'm putting it on the right side of the account in the right amount, my debit should equal my credits. I have a debit to cash for 24.50 and a credit to service revenue for 24.50. So a debit to cash, oops, for 24.50 and a credit to service revenue for 24.50. I have a debit to accounts receivable for 3300 credit to service revenue. So a debit to accounts receivable for 20 oops for 3300. Oops. So make that 30 let me erase that. 3300 and a credit to service revenue for 3300 a debit to cash for 1450 and a credit to accounts receivable so a debit to cash for 1450 and a credit to accounts receivable for 1450 uh, a debit to salary expense for 575 and a credit to cash for 575 So a debit to salary expense for 575 and a credit to cash for 575. And then last and no, not last one, uh, debit to rent expense for 1720 and cash for 1720. 1720 and a credit to cash for 1720. And then lastly, a uh, debit to dividends for 2500 and a credit to cash for 2500 so a debit to dividends for uh, 2500 and a credit to cash for 2500 okay so um, that was number three that was posting all the transactions to the T account. So now I have to calculate the balances in each account. Right? So all this is is basically just doing the math. Okay. So I add up all of my debits in my cash account and I add up all of my credits in my cash account and then I subtract one from the other. And whichever is greater is the side that it goes on. So when I add up these debits, a hundred thousand plus sixteen hundred plus twenty four fifty plus plus sixteen hundred oops hundred thousand plus sixteen hundred plus twenty four fifty plus fourteen fifty that gives me on the debit side here a hundred and five thousand five hundred so now on the credit side, I have 28,000 plus 575 plus 2300 plus
plus 575 plus 1720 plus 2500 and that gives me 35,670. When I um, subtract that from the when I subtract that from the 105,000 was it or whatever amount that was I end up with 69,830 on the debit side. So my balance in the cash account is 69,830. 69,830 on the debit side. So again, all I'm doing to get the balances is I'm adding up the debits, I'm adding up the credits, and I subtract one from the other. And whichever is greater, so my debit side here was greater than my credit side, so I put whatever the difference is between those two numbers on the side that's greater. In this case here, the difference was 69,830, and the debits were greater, so I put it on the debit side. It's just that simple. Um, when I go and I do the same thing, all right, you know, let's look at accounts receivable because it's a little bit easier, right? 1850 plus 3300 is like 5150 and on the debit side and 1450 on the credit side. So 5150 minus 1450 gives me a difference of minus gives me a difference of 3700 okay that 3700 since the debit side is greater than the credit side I'm gonna put the 3700 on the debit side okay it's just that simple right now a little secret here is you know knowing what the normal balance of an account is I mean we know cash is an asset and the normal balance of an asset is on the debit side. So any of our assets, most likely, the balance in the account is going to be on the debit side. You know, for our um, for our uh, liabilities, the and equity accounts, they're going to be on the credit side. For revenue, it's going to be on the credit side, and for expenses, it's going to be on the credit side. Now, does it have to always be that way? No, but 97, 98 percent of the time. Um, you know, whatever the normal balance is of that account, that's the side that that balance is going to be on, right? Okay, so supplies, real simple, one number, furniture, one number, land, one number, accounts payable is, now notice, this is what I mean, we know accounts payable is liability, and the normal balance of a liability account is on the credit side so we would kind of expect our um, accounts payable account to have a balance on the credit side and notice I hit said 97 to you know 98 percent of the time well let's just say as an example we only had one uh, you know we only bought from one vendor and we were only getting we were uh, the vendor you know, had a credit line. We had a credit line with that one vendor. And let's say, um, let's say I purchased something uh, and the balance, you know, that invoice was $120. So that would be like a credit of $120. All right. That's would be the normal balance. But now let's say I went and I decided to pay that invoice, but for whatever reason, I overpaid right because why I transpose my numbers okay and I pay 210 well the difference between those two numbers is $90 okay and so that's where I would end up having a debit under accounts payable for $90 but that doesn't happen that often okay um, you know that's when generally you've made some kind of mistake or there was some kind of credit given or something like this that you would end up having you know uh, a quote unquote negative balance in an account remember the way it's set up is um, the vast majority of the time we're going to have a positive number which is the normal balance of that account so 2875 less 2300 is 575 for my accounts payable on the credit side because the credit is larger common stock is 100,000 dividends are 2500 
Okay, service revenue, when I add all of those up, 0, 0, 14, 15, 22, 2, 3, 4, 6, 90, 200 for the service, no, 8,400, sorry, 8,400. Let me look at that again, 16, 850, 20, 30, 300, right, do my math right and get 8,400. Uh, yeah, 8,400. Okay, 10, 14, 15, 15, 19, 22. Let me see, 16, 1850, 2450, and 3300. I'm doing the math here. Plus 1600, plus 1850, plus 2450, plus 3300 is 9200 not 8400 <clears throat> like it has in the uh, solution and that's what I thought right so I have 9200 here and that's this here I'm I'm just telling you right now while I'm working out this problem I'm you know I have the solution next to me but as I'm doing the math here I see that this amount is is incorrect Okay, so this may cause me a problem when I'm creating a trial balance. Okay, so let me just double check a couple of things here. No, let me just continue on and we'll pick up and see. So 575, 575 is 1150 and rent is 1720. Okay, uh, 2500 for dividends. Uh, 100,000, 575, 28,000, 23, 575, 37, and 69, 830. Okay, so I just want you to be aware that when I added this up, I came out with 9,200. Okay, 10, 0, that's 10, carry my 1, 715. 19, 22, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9,200 is what I get. Now the solution says 8,400. All right. We're going to have to see why there's a discrepancy there. Okay. So you're seeing me find them, you know, looking at the solution and saying, hey, what's in the solution is different from what I'm getting. So now is it possible my work is wrong? Oh, probably. Um, but let's continue on and see whether it's my work or the work in the book that's wrong. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is prepare a trial balance for Slater and Associates at July 31st, 2014. So new slide. Okay, we need headings Slater and Associates. I'm abbreviating. Make sure you write it out. And I'm going to abbreviate trial balance here. Make sure you write that out. And remember, your heading is centered. Okay, um, and it's for July. 31st, 2014. Okay. So um, now we, when I create a trial balance, you know, I put the heading and then I list my accounts. So I have to go down and write cash, accounts receivable. And remember, you can have your account numbers here if you had account numbers. Okay. We don't have account numbers, so I don't need. I'm not putting them in. But if I did, I would, for the simple reason that it makes uh, it makes re referencing a lot easier. I don't have to be, you know, going back and forth. Remember, a trial balance is nothing more than a chart of accounts, and a chart of accounts has the listing of the general ledger accounts. Well, the trial balance has the balances in those accounts. Okay. Uh, right. So common stock and if you're creating uh, a trial balance remember it is a financial statement so you wouldn't abbreviate you would capitalize where appropriate um, uh, formatting is is important and you can watch all of uh, my comments about that in the theory videos but um, for brevity here um, I am uh, just you know, doing, doing the work.
because this is only meant for me. Now, if I was going to present this to somebody else, of course, I would have to follow the proper formatting of everything. Okay, so I'm going to have a debit column here and I'm going to have a credit column here. And I'm going to put my balances. So my cash balance was a debit for $69,830, I believe. Uh, right, 69830 And I put a dollar sign for the first number in that column. Uh, receivables was 3700 supplies 575 Receivables, 3700 575 for supplies. Furniture was 2300 and land is 28000 So furniture is 2300 and land is 28000 Uh, my accounts payable was 575 and stock is 100,000 and dividends is 2500. So accounts payable is 575, first number, and it's a credit. Um, the common stock was 100,000 and the dividends were uh, 2500. But don't automatically put it in the credit column because remember the dividends is a debit of 25,000, right? Accounts payable is five a credit. Stock is, a, uh, I mean, the common stock had a credit, but my dividends, even though it's an equity account, it's a, a debit there, All right? So now we're going to look at this here issue of the uh, revenues, ex uh, the revenues, salary expense, and the rent expense. So 9200 I'm showing as a credit. Right? So I'm going to put 9200 which is what is actually being shown on the trial balance. Okay. So when you were creating your balances and if you were looking at the solution, all right, um, and you were filling out the T accounts and creating the balances, it had said that the um, balance in the service revenue account was 8400 and that was wrong so that's an error in the solution manual right the correct amount is 9200 right salary expense is 1150 and rent expense is 1720 so salary expense is 1150 and remember that's a debit and same with the rent expense of $1,720. Okay, so we draw an underline because that represents a mathematical calculation. And we're going to do the math and we're going to put uh, dollar sign 109,775 and double underline it because uh, that's the end of our calculation. And we do the same thing with our credit side. We add up these three numbers and it comes out to that amount. Okay, it comes out to that amount. Right? So we add up all of these numbers, write in our amount here. Same thing on the credit side. Okay, and if our debits equal our credits, we know our trial balance is balanced. I mean, the information could be wrong. Okay, I mean, some of these balance, you know, maybe I made an incorrect journal entry. Okay. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's fine, okay? I mean, you are going to have errors in your books and you'll make correcting errors and adjusting it, uh, correcting entries and adjusting journal entries in order to make the balances correct. But whether journal entries are right or wrong doesn't affect whether debits are equal credits. They, you know, when I made my journal entries, my debits should have equaled my credits. When I post it to my ledger accounts, if I'm posting them on the right sides and the right amounts, debits should still equal credits. If I do the math to get the balances in the accounts, you know, like this, like this, now I'm going to change this because of the, the, the uh, solution in the textbook, okay? Um, I'm going to make this 8,400. If I had done the math incorrectly and it was 8,400 like it was in the solutions, okay, then that means 
the balance here should have shouldn't have been 9200 the balance here would have been 8400 and that would have been um, that means my total balance here would have been 109 let's see here it's 575 plus 100,000 plus 8400 this would have given me a balance of 108,975. So, you know, obviously because I, you know, because the author made a mathematical error and had this balance of 8,400, at the time you might not have known it, but when you come to do your trial balance, you don't just add up these numbers, get this amount, and automatically write it over here. Okay? No, you have to actually do this math here to figure this out. That's your double check. And if I'm not double checking it, okay, and if I'm fudging just because, oh, I came up with 109,775, um, you know, that error is going to, you know, that's going to get found, okay, down the road, that's going to get found, right? So if you went and had done this, where you added these up, got this number, and then said, okay, I know debits have to equal credit, so let me just put this in, okay? And that's how you presented your work. You're in for a world of hurt, all right? Um, if this went to uh, uh, another, you know, an outside source, you know, uh, you know, a third party, and they're looking at this, they could make uh, decisions based upon this, and you're, um, you know, you're going to be responsible for legal liabilities, right? Because they're making financial decisions on your inaccurate your inaccurate information, all because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You're supposed to add those columns up and say, okay, is that 109,775? Which we know it isn't. We know it's only 108,975, right? So, oh, you have this, you know, you have a mistake somewhere, so you have to go back and you have to find it, okay? And when you go back and you find it, you see, oh, it's not supposed to be 8,400, it's supposed to be 9,200, which means now I go over and I correct this and make this 9,200, and that means now, you know, I have the right amounts. You know, my debits equal my credits. Okay, so uh, that's it for you know this particular problem. Um, I hope that gave you just a little bit more insight into. Um, into you know this process and again it's a process um, if you do the work you know the process becomes easier and easier because you know yeah at first it's like oh, I have to remember how to do all these steps and you know the information changes and you can't mimic it exactly okay the process stays the same but the information is you know does change you know there's flexibility in it but in all intents and purposes, you end up with the same thing. So that's it for problem 39, and um, we'll look at problem 40 in the next video.